Anthony Volpe is one of the most important players on the Yankees as he's considered the future at a position where the Yankees have really struggled over the years. Last season, he was an okay shortstop, and while learning moments and rough patches were expected when he first got called up, as he mostly skipped AAA, that also meant that he would need to get better in 2024, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Consistency was probably the biggest issue that he had, and the changes he'd make over the offseason would be specifically to combat those issues. Now off to a hot start, he's been slotted at the top of the lineup, but is this the right call, or are the Yankees making the wrong choice by leading him off? Today, we're going to talk about the leadoff spot and why Anthony Volpe could be the future for the Yankees at the position. If you guys haven't done so already, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell as it goes a long way towards helping us grow, and it's free. We have you guys covered with daily content for the Bronx Bombers, talking about them at the major and minor league levels, and if you want to stay up to date on your New York Yankees, this is your one-stop shop for the best content you can find. With all of that out of the way, let's now get into today's video. It's not a stretch to say the Yankees have really struggled to get production from their shortstop position over the last few years, as since the start of the 2020 season through the end of the 2023 season, the Yankees finished 24th in F war at 5.5, with an 85 WRC plus and a 303 OBP from their shortstops. Not only is that not going to cut it, but it gets worse when you realize the Yankees rank as one of the worst teams in terms of outs above average at negative 10 and fielding run value at negative 7 because Anthony Volpe is the only shortstop the Yankees have had in the StatCast era to play a full season and have a qualified outs above average that was positive. It's almost mind-boggling to get around, but Anthony Volpe is already the franchise leader in outs above average at 3 and defensive runs saved at 18. Again, he hasn't played two full MLB seasons yet, and he is considered the best defensive shortstop the Yankees have had since we've had modern defensive data. I know that it's a little bit spotty since there are shortstops in the past that precede guys like Derek Jeter, who are potentially better shortstops than Volpe defensively, but I guess we'll never know. Shortstop is just a weird position for the Yankees. It's one where they've really struggled without Derek Jeter. And look, they had a couple of really good years from Didi Gregorius, and it looked like Gleyber Torres could usurp Didi as a shortstop, but they never really found their long-term future guy there, and Anthony Volpe presents a unique opportunity to finally have that option. Thus far on the season, he has a 207 WRC plus and a 460 OBP, and while I don't expect him to continue the pace of having a 200 WRC plus, I do expect him to remain an above average chair on the season and contribute positively to this ball club. Steamer updated projections believe that Anthony Volpe will finish with around the 8th best F4 for a shortstop, which would certainly be a big difference for the Yankees compared to where they were at last year. They project him to finish with a 3.6 F4, which would be a 1.6 increase from his 2.0 F4 last season. Personally, I think Anthony Volpe's ceiling is extremely high because of his excellent defense, but defense doesn't really factor into whether you make for a good leadoff hitter or not. The ability to get on base and make good swing decisions really determines how good of a player you're going to be at the top of the lineup, and Anthony Volpe has certainly overhauled his swing decisions. His chase rate has dropped from 28.7% to 22.8%, his whiff rate has dropped from 28.1% to 12.2%, and that's while his meatball swing percentage has increased from 75.4% to 77.8%. He's swinging at pitches he needs to swing at, he's not swinging at pitches he shouldn't swing at, and it's overall created a profile that's super good for the top of the lineup, and I'm extremely excited to see how Anthony Volpe's swing continues to develop and play as the season goes on. The Yankees have a lot of really interesting players in their lineup, from Juan Soto to Aaron Judge, to even the guys at the bottom part of the order, like Labor Torres, Alex Verdugo, and Austin Wells, but Anthony Volpe's unique ability to provide speed and on-base skills makes him the best choice for the top of the lineup, even if that means shuffling some guys around. I think Labor Torres profiles a lot better for a middle-of-the-order presence, and I think as his season gets going and as the ball gets rolling for him, we'll slowly see him pick things up and become a much better hitter. I think the problem with leading him off is that he doesn't take his A swings as often because he's trying to see pitches and get on base when he does have the power to shoot the ball the other way, to shoot the ball into the gaps, to hit home runs, and do the things that we saw him do last year. But as it pertains to some other leadoff options, the first one that stands out is DJ LeMahieu, who has been the Yankees' primary leadoff hitter since 2019. When the Yankees signed him to that two-year $24 million deal, I don't think they ever expected him to be one of the more consistent hitters on the team, but that's exactly what he was from 2019 to 2021. 
He took a step back in 2021, had a pretty good 2022, and then took a step back again in 2023 with a displaced fracture in his foot knocking him out for the first few weeks of this season. He's in Cleveland right now with the Yankees, and he did take on-field batting practice over the last series against Miami, but I am doubtful of his ability to remain a competent leadoff hitter at the Major League level. And the reason for that is because as age and time goes on, you get less athletic, your swing decisions become worse, your contact skills get worse, your power gets worse. All of these things factor into you being a worse baseball player, and I think LeMahieu is just a much better player for a bottom third of the order role, where he's deepening and extending the order versus setting the table where you have a more dynamic player in the form of Anthony Volpe who can swipe a bag for you and create a distraction while a pitcher is facing Juan Soto or Aaron Judge. The experiment of leading Anthony Volpe off had immediate results yesterday, and I know it didn't reflect in the scoreboard, but the Yankees had three situations where Aaron Judge came up with runs in scoring position, most notably in the final innings of that game, where the Yankees had multiple opportunities to strike, and Aaron Judge just didn't come through. Over the course of the season, Aaron Judge will convert those opportunities, but those are situations that are created by having a consistently great leadoff hitter in the form of Anthony Volpe, who hits in front of Juan Soto, and Juan Soto, we know, gets on base better than anybody in baseball. What Anthony Volpe can also provide is he's young and you don't have to pay him a lot of money over the next six years, so he can be a face of your franchise and keep costs down at shortstop while you invest in positions like right field if you're going to keep Juan Soto or if you want to go out and trade other players in your organization to get premier talent at the deadline. Anthony Volpe can be a cornerstone player for this franchise, and I think his role is best suited at the top of the lineup because I think the swing changes he's made are conducive of a leadoff hitter. His bat angle is roughly 9 degrees flatter, while his bat speed's taken an uptick as a result, and overall, I think the changes he's made will result in him being a quality leadoff hitter for the Yankees for years to come. What I would like to see is more line drives and a few more fly balls and some fewer ground balls because a ground ball rate above 50%, even if you are a really good contact hitter, isn't going to necessarily work at the major league level, although there are some hitters who have been able to go against that trend. I will also say this about Volpe, I think the speed's going to allow him to beat out some of those ground balls, so maybe he can take advantage, and the raw power is still pretty good. He does know how to generate quality contact consistently, it's just a matter of finding that launch angle for him, getting more line drives, generating a lot of sweet spots, and putting up the numbers that we're accustomed to from what he did at the minor league level. The thing for Volpe is that I think he got a lot of flack for not instantly being a star, when a lot of players have had weird or below average rookie seasons just to go on and have a really good sophomore year and a really strong career as a whole. Again, let's put this into context here. Anthony Volpe was a two-war player on Fangraphs and a three-war player on Baseball Reference. A two to three-war player in your rookie year is not a bad player. Is it a great player? No. Is it a player that will win rookie of the year? Probably not. But this notion that Anthony Volpe was just outright unplayable for the entirety of his rookie campaign fails to accurately paint what happened that season. A lot of his development happened at the major league level. He went straight from double A to the major leagues, essentially, skipping most of the development he would get at triple A, which came about because the Yankees were so needy for a shortstop that they knew that Anthony Volpe could provide them more value than any of their in-house options, and they were correct. Isaiah Kainafalafa was not a better baseball player, and Oswald Peraza has never proven himself to be a quality major league baseball player, so you ended up with Anthony Volpe, who was your best option at shortstop, was an okay baseball player, and we're now starting to see the skills that we saw at the minor league level as he has shown an incredible feel for contact, really patient skills at the plate that have allowed him to work walks and get on base, and the base running, which we saw from last year as well, which is translated into this profile that's perfect for the leadoff spot. I think Anthony Volpe is the leadoff hitter for the future, and hopefully these changes are able to maintain themselves throughout the season as he continues to mature and get into his major league career. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think that Anthony Volpe should be the team's leadoff hitter, or do you think somebody else should be? Personally, we here at Fire State Yankees think Anthony Volpe is the right guy for the job, but we also love hearing other opinions and having conversations with you guys, whether that's on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or on this very same YouTube page. You guys can also check us out on EmpireSportsMedia.com, we have written coverage of all of your favorite New York sports teams, and if you guys want to get caught up on the betting scene, check out Fireside Bets, it's our new project, and it's growing at a pretty rapid pace, so if you guys want to help us out, that would be great as well. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in, you can follow me at Ryan Garcia ESM, and we'll see you guys in the next one, peace out.